Hello, and thank you for joining us today on this Pentecost Sunday. You'll notice that the altar pyramids are red and the lights are red as we celebrate the power and gift of the Holy Spirit today. I'm Pastor Schoen, pastor here at Word of Life Lutheran Church. I want to welcome you to our service this morning in the name of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord and Savior. Today is also week three of our sermon series on discipleship, what it means to follow Jesus. And so today we will be having an emphasis on what it means to go and to do what Jesus has called us to do. So later on in our service, we will be examining scripture and thinking and talking about that. We also want to invite you, if there's any concerns that you have, any prayer requests that you might have, please do contact us at 630 355-9655. We also invite and encourage you to follow us on Facebook, on our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash WOL Naperville, where you can stream our services weekly, and we also throughout the course of the week post encouraging scripture passages and other content as well. You can also stream our services and find other video Bible studies on our YouTube page. And if you go to YouTube directly, you can simply search Word of Life Naperville to find us. May God bless your time today of worship. our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Where we remember that our help is in the name of the Lord, who has made heaven and earth. And we remember that if the Lord kept a record of sins, who could stand? We trust that with him there is forgiveness. With our Heavenly Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we have grace. And since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, And to receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. And as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. And where we say, Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, Lead us to everlasting life. And Almighty God, merciful Father, in holy baptism, you declared us to be your children and gathered us into your one holy church, in which you daily and richly forgive us our sins, grant us new life through your Spirit. Be in our midst, live in our faith, and graciously receive our prayer and praise through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, 
and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our first reading this morning is from Deuteronomy chapter 30. The Lord your God will make you abundantly prosperous in all the work of your hand, in the fruit of your womb, and in the fruit of your cattle, and the fruit of your ground. For the Lord will again take delight in prospering you as he took delight in your fathers, when you obey the voice of the Lord your God to keep his commandments and his statutes that are written in the book of the law, when you turn to the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. For this commandment that I command you today is not too hard for you, neither is it far off. It is not in heaven that you should say, Who will ascend to heaven for us and bring it to us that we may hear it and do it? Neither is it beyond the sea that you should say, Who will go over the sea for us and bring it to us that we may hear it and do it? But the word is very near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart so that you can do it. Our New Testament reading this morning It's from Acts chapter 2. Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words, for these people are not drunk as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions, your old men shall dream dreams. Even on my male servants and female servants, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the day of the Lord comes, the great and magnificent day. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Our gospel reading today is from Luke chapter 10. But he, desiring to justify himself, said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell among robbers, who stripped him and beat him and departed, leaving him half dead. Now by chance a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him he passed by on the other side. So likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he journeyed, came to where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion. He went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. And he set him on his own animal and brought him to an inn and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper, saying, Take care of him, and whatever more you spend, I will repay you when I come back. Which of these three do you think proved to be a neighbor to the man who fell among the robbers? He said, the one who showed him mercy. Jesus said to him, you go and do likewise. This is the gospel of our Lord. Let us now confess our Christian faiths using the words of the Apostles' Creed, where we confess together, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Thank you. 
sign of triumph, Satan's host doth flee. And then Christian soldiers unto victory. Hell's foundations quiver at the shout of praise. Brothers, lift your voices, loud your anthems raise. Onward, Christian soldiers, marching as to cross of Jesus going on before like a mighty army moves the church of God brothers we are treading where the saints have tried soldiers marching as to war with the cross of Jesus going on before onward then ye people join our happy throng blend with your voices in the triumph song glory loud and honor unto Christ the King this through countless ages men and angels sing Soldiers marching as to war With the cross of Jesus going on before Hello, and welcome back to week three of our sermon series, Disciple, which we've been talking about what it means to follow Jesus. Week one, we talked about looking at Jesus and watching what he does. Last week, week two, we talked about thinking on the things that we have seen from Jesus, giving them time to kind of marinate in our hearts. And week three, today, we want to talk about what it means to actually go and do the work of being a disciple.
Now, for week three, I chose this sign or this um, diagram because when we go out and we do what Jesus has called us to do, when we actually become a disciple and try and seek to follow what he has called us to do and follow the things that Jesus has done, it never seems to be a straight line. It never seems to be the path that we sometimes think it's going to be. And we end up going in different directions, but ultimately, when we follow Jesus, We believe and we trust in him that he will lead us to the right place and he will call us to do exactly what we need to do. Now, there's all kinds of passages that you can look at in the Bible, especially in the New Testament, of what it means to be a disciple, what it means to follow God and do the things that he has called us to do. One of the great parables that Jesus taught parable of the Good Samaritan, that's not going to be our text today, but we use it as an example, is a great message from Jesus on what it means to do good works, to do good things as he has called us to do, where where other people may not be so quick to intervene in the lives of others. We want to be a Good Samaritan and show mercy and grace and kindness and love to other people. And so that leads us in the direction of our main point of what our text is going to tell us today. And simply put, discipleship is incomplete without doing as we have been taught. Discipleship is incomplete if we haven't done what we've been taught. Common sense tells us that if we're in the classroom and we're learning from one of our teachers, ultimately we're learning something for a reason, Not just to acquire knowledge, but to actually go and do something. The same thing as far as being a disciple. When we sit and we listen to Jesus, when we read scriptures and we look at the things that Jesus has done, when we meet with other people and talk about it in Bible study and fellowship with one another, kind of in the church setting here, Ultimately, we must understand that this is just an incomplete part of what being a disciple is all about unless we actually take what we've learned from Jesus, the things that we've been thinking about, and we go and actually accomplish them. And that ultimately is what our Lord wants us to do. As he is the teacher, as we learn, Ultimately, we want to go and we want to do. That is the way that God has risen up his church, his people, you and me, to accomplish great things in the world around us. Ultimately, that all things that we do, the the, the love and the, the grace and the charity that we see in Jesus, the mercy, the forgiveness and grace that he gives to other people, that we go and do those things hopefully will point other people to the message of Jesus, that they too might be saved. And so I encourage and invite you, as we look over this text from Colossians chapter 1, um, that you will get a chance to see a couple of points about what it means to be a disciple. And point number one is that leadership needs to pray for discipleship, and we need to pray for the discipleship of one another. Colossians chapter 1, where St. Paul, as he's talking to the church, says this, that we have not ceased to pray for you, asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will and all spiritual wisdom and understanding. I think it's a powerful thing to know that when Paul was talking to the church and he had seen the compassion and the grace and, and the joy that the people had in learning about our Lord and they were willing to go and do things that Jesus had called them to do, that Paul was very quick to tell them, I am praying for you. And I think we as leadership, we as pastors and other leaders of the congregation need to continually communicate and remind you, remind everybody that we are praying fervently for you. We are advocating for you before the Heavenly Father and we want you to succeed. And ultimately, you can see us as cheerleaders. We want all people, as we seek to teach about Jesus and as we seek to show people what it means to follow Jesus, that they understand that they are not on their own. We don't want anybody, we don't want any of you to feel or believe that you are on your own. But it's not just me as a pastor, but it's all pastors. We continually pray for all of the saints, all of the people who are called in Jesus' name, We pray for all of you 
that the Lord might be with you and help you accomplish great things, that you are continually encouraged in what you are doing and the faith that you have. And I believe this comes from Jesus as well, that Jesus, today's Pentecost Sunday in which we celebrate the power and the gift of the Holy Spirit. And so today is a day that we celebrate that Jesus also wants us to succeed himself. And so he promised that when he ascended into heaven, that he would send the Holy Spirit to be with us and to watch over us, to help us, to be an encourager and to guide us. And so the message of discipleship would be incomplete if we didn't talk about the power of the Holy Spirit being with us. Not only do we cease to, or do we do not cease to pray for you, but we want you to be filled with the knowledge and with all the spiritual wisdom and understanding of God. And that comes by the power of the Holy Spirit. So it's not just me that's praying for you. It's not just other pastors that are praying for you. It's not just as a church where we pray for one another but God's Holy Spirit himself is here in our midst helping us accomplish the things that God lays before us. Point number two, discipleship considers the worthiness of our actions. Discipleship considers the worthiness of our actions, where Paul continues when saying, so as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, bearing fruit in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. So ultimately, as a disciple, we want to consider the walk that we have. And we want to consider the things that we do. Are they in a manner that is worthy of following Jesus? Do they honor our Lord? Do they supplement the things that he has done? Do they mimic the love and the grace and the compassion that he had for you and for me? Does it mimic the power of the forgiveness of sins that we all share in the name of Jesus? Are we accomplishing what God in Jesus Christ chose to do in this world first? God wants us to be pleasing in all that we do, that we bear good fruit, that the things that we do not only point people to Jesus, but they make the world around us better. And so also, a part of the discipleship process that helps supplement and helps think about and helps us think about what it means to be worthy and, and to walk in a manner that is worthy of God we need to think and consider that we also must continue to acquire knowledge and we must continue every step of the way to consider the things that Jesus has done and how we want to do the same in our lives. And point number three, discipleship draws on the power of the teacher and the encouragement of times past. Where Paul continues, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might for all endurance and patience with joy. That means that we want to do the things that God has called us to do with the strength and the power that God gives to us. And that comes from a remembrance of the things that we have learned from Jesus. We want to continually remember those stories. We want to continually remember with great joy that things that Jesus did for the people around him. We want to draw on the strength of Jesus himself. We also want to continue to remember that he sends his Holy Spirit also to give us strength and encouragement. Ultimately, we want to remember the things that we have done in the past, the great things in Jesus' name that will help give us strength and encouragement for the mission that we have as we speak and for the things that we will do in the future. The power of memory, the power of remembrance, those things will help us move forward boldly as we accomplish what it means to be a disciple. And finally, point number four, as this text concludes, discipleship gives thanks for the opportunity to actually be a disciple. Paul concludes this passage from Colossians chapter 1. Giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. Here's the reality. You don't have to be a disciple. I don't have to be a disciple. 
You are free to go and do things that you would rather do instead of following Jesus. I am free, if I so choose, to go and do something else instead of being a disciple. Now, I wouldn't advise that because I believe that following Jesus, and I want everyone who's listening, I want all of you and all of the people that you tell, I want everybody to consider what it means, the power of what it means to follow Jesus because I believe that following Jesus is better than following the ways of this world or doing things that go against the way of God. There are times, sure, where we have to give up things in this life in order to be a disciple. As we talked about last week, there is a price that we will pay to be a disciple. But to me, I want to focus on the good things and not the negative things of what I have to give up. I want to think about the things that I gain and the things that I can do. The win-win relationship of actually being able to go and accomplish what God has called me to do. Ultimately, what if... God does exist because there's a lot of people that don't believe that he exists. And maybe you're struggling, maybe you're wrestling with it, and you think that you've got better things to do with your time. But just what if God exists? And we as Christians believe that the way to heaven, the way to salvation is through the simple message of trusting and believing in Jesus and making that confession that says, I believe and trust that Jesus died for my sins and that he has called me to something greater. Wouldn't it be better to follow God and to follow Jesus Christ, to know and to trust that heaven awaits us? And by following Jesus in this world, There are great things that we can do. It's a win-win opportunity, knowing that we get to accomplish uh, grace and mercy. We get to do good things for people around here. And we get to trust and believe that what Jesus said about being the way and the path to heaven and through salvation in him, we might have eternal life. We should be giving thanks for the opportunity to follow Jesus. We should be giving thanks for the opportunity to be his disciple because we understand what he has first done for us. And so, discipleship, simply put, is incomplete until we actually go and do the things that we have been taught. Jesus teaches many things. He shows us many great things that he has done, not just for the people that were around him at his time, but as he continues to do for you and for me. And he calls us and he challenges us. If you are willing to follow me, I will show you great things. I will be with you, I will encourage you, and I will help you every step of the way. It might not be easy, and sometimes we might not understand where we're going or where Jesus is leading. But by the power of faith and by the power of trust, we believe Jesus is leading us to something greater. And so, would you join me in following Jesus, going and doing as he is called, and being his disciple? In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Would you pray with me, please? Lord God, Heavenly Father, we pray that you would help us to be disciples every day, that we would continue to search your scripture and look at the things that your Son has done. Heavenly Father, we pray that you would help us to think and consider these things, understanding the price that we will pay to be a disciple, and ultimately putting our faith and trust in your Son, following him, and being happy to be called one of his disciples. Help us with that every day as we seek to change the world for the great joy of Jesus' kingdom. It's in his name we pray. Amen. Thank you for worshiping here at Word of Life Church in Naperville. We now worship the Lord through our giving. To give tithes, offerings, or to donate and support, you can do that on our website at www.wordoflife.net. Or you can simply just text the amount that you would like to give to 630-949-3892 and follow the prompts to set up your giving for easy, simple, and secure future giving. Would you pray with me, please? 
Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you this day that we get a chance to gather as disciples of your Son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for the message that he has given to us, the encouragement that we continue to find as we see the things that he has done for others and for us. We thank you for the power of your Holy Spirit that you have sent in our midst to encourage us every step of the way and help us by the power of faith to understand these things and to follow willingly. Lord God, Heavenly Father, as we seek to be greater disciples, just continue to lead us as you have done. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we pray that you would open hearts, that they too would seek after Jesus and that they would seek to make that confession that says he is their Lord and Savior. Lord God, Heavenly Father, as churches and other businesses are looking to open up over the next number of weeks, we pray for leaders at all levels, whether it be at the national level, whether it be at the local level, and church people, and church leaders. Uh, Lord God, Heavenly Father, we know that so many have different opinions as to how to proceed and move forward, but we pray that um, these things would not divide us that you would give us a spirit of trust and faith in our leaders, no matter who they might be, that they would guide us with right decisions. Lord God, Heavenly Father, continue to help us have greater trust in our leaders and faith that we might encourage them in the difficult decisions that they have to make. Lord God, Heavenly Father, for all of those that continue to need your healing hand, whether it be healing from the coronavirus or other ailments, we pray that as they cry out to you, And we pray on their behalf that you would hear, and in your mercy and grace, that you would heal them. Lord God, Heavenly Father, as people are traveling more now, whether it be for business or for vacation, no matter where or no matter how they might be traveling, Lord, we pray that you would be with them and keep them safe. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we continue to pray for um, these streaming services, not just here at Word of Life, but by churches all across the world that through these uh, new opportunities that uh, people who may not uh, be willing to come into a church, that, uh, that they would watch these services and that they might be encouraged by your grace to make that confession of faith, put their trust in you. For these prayers and all the other prayers that are on our hearts, Lord, we lift them to you now. In the name of your son, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Considering the prayers that we have just lifted, let us now pray the prayer our Lord and Savior has taught us to pray, where we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive the benediction of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Strength to strength up
pose Stand up, stand up for Jesus Stand in His strength alone The arm of flesh will fail you Ye did not trust your own Put on the gospel put on with prayer where duty calls or danger be never wanting there stand up stand up for Jesus the strife will not be long this day the noise of battle the victor song to him that overcometh a crown of life shall be he with the king of glory shall reign eternally Once again, want to thank you for worshiping with us today on this Pentecost Sunday. As always, if you do need anything, please don't hesitate to contact us at 630-355-9655. And may God bless your week.